I think technology has been seen as an enemy of legal education in terms of residential education, not the kind that Sanjay is talking about, which is open to the world, but face-to-face, -face, which happens in the Christopher Langdell classrooms. Many professors, I think, feel that the best thing they can do is to say no laptops in class, shut the class down, isolate it from the outside world, and let's get back to the good old days when we had, in imagination, intimate, forthright discussion in classes. To me, that's a great mistake. It's a defensive posture. But its approach to technology is not one that leads you to say what we need is more technology in the classroom in the form of PowerPoint or other kinds of activity accessories. It's rather a challenge. Harvard Law School brings in now an extraordinarily diverse student body. Any given class has students that come from many different backgrounds. Different backgrounds mean that people know different things. You learn from your environment as you grow. And by the time you get here, you think you know a lot, but lots of other people think they know a lot too and differ from you. So the question that I think is on the table, and I put it at the core of the mission of a residential university, is how to create classrooms in which students honestly engage each other in an environment of mutual civility and trust. Now, it's just a fact. Trust is not an aspect of the open net. A classroom that is open to the net is a classroom in which students can take notes on their laptops, that's true. But if the professor's focal interest slips just a little bit, the competition with the addiction of the screen for students is very substantial. You can shop, you can email, you can chat, you can do any number of things other than engage in the ideal of the law school classroom. Well, I don't think closing the classroom is a way to do anything much more than to get back to where we were, whereas I see technology advancing other fields very dramatically. We don't see an advance in legal education from technology. The question, though, for me is, is there a way to use the affordances of technology to actually enhance the facility of students coming from diverse backgrounds to identify the elements of their diversity, to focus on their differences with other students, and then to engage with them in ways that lead them to transcend and come to some core of increasing maturity as they go through the legal education process. As I see technology, it has greatly assisted the knowledge transfer aspects of learning. But it has not particularly enhanced the experiential aspects of learning. Kendra speaks about an intelligence, an emotional intelligence quotient. Instead of emotional intelligence being revealed in our classrooms, I think our classrooms have become more like political squabbles. People come in thinking, I'm an advocate. That means I have to take a position and I have to confront and be aggressive and all those kinds of features which in fact are not conducive 
to a sense of trust. So for me, the aspect of it that has been my focus is to take the digital environment and treat it as a way of expanding the classroom. And in particular, I advocate expanding into a pseudonymous discussion environmental space. Anonymity scares the crap out of everybody. We've all felt it on the open net. And so much so that when one suggests any form of anonymity amongst a class of students, there's an initial hostile reaction to it. But the nature of the classroom doesn't have to be the same as the open net. If one actually begins a class by identifying the fact that we are all here to learn from each other, to identify our biases and overcome them, learn the emotional intelligence that Kendra is speaking about, then the opportunity to create an adjunct to the classroom, sometimes for use during class, sometimes for use outside of class, of a pseudonymous discussion space. Pseudonymy in that space is like the Chatham House rule. It enforces a structure in which you don't know what the attributes are of the person who's speaking to you. You can't be biased against those attributes because you don't know them. You speak yourself from behind a mask so that if you say something that is perhaps offensive, it's not going to come back to you. Now, no one in the class, and I've been messing with this now for several years, no one, we don't have trolls amongst our student body. No one is out to kill anyone else in class. And so the opportunity to actually engage with each other in an environment in which you are safe, safe to say what's on your mind, safe to express what it is you feel, and see what the response is before you actually engage in face-to-face -face where it really counts. So my bottom line is one that says we need to turn our attention in a very positive way to researching what the affordances of cyberspace offer us if we imagine the classroom itself to be a contained cyber environment. I believe that if Harvard and MIT and other major universities focused on how to intensify interaction in a civil classroom. If we made that a research study, and you imagine the classroom of 2040, it could, in fact, be a classroom very different from the classrooms that we are now in. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. So let me start with a question directed uh, to you in light of your experience using anonymity in an online environment in the context of legal education. And your experience so far reveals that there has not been a problem in terms of trolls uh, or the kinds of behavior that we see in anonymous online environments in other contexts. My question is, uh, why do you think that that's the case? And do you think that the kind of instruction that you're providing and the kind of experiences that you're providing to your students might help in the future, if widely adopted, to minimize the kind of trolling behavior and anonymous, uh, malicious behavior that we are seeing in our culture more generally? Well, to start with, the pseudonymous environment is just a tool. It needs introduction. It needs a start that says, here we are. We are a group. What are we here for? Are we here to learn from each other? Do we understand that if we establish a pseudonymous environment that is limited to ourselves, 
that any one of us can destroy it by acting like a troll? If we actually <coughs> encourage the idea of a group identity, a class identity, of responsible civil discourse, which is actually what we're here to learn. If we define Kendra's emotional intelligence as the lawyer's skill of responding to offensive comment, not by being silent about it, not by being offensive back, but by responding without giving offense, that's a real lawyer's skill. Anyone who engages steadily in, well, I don't know, I won't say anyone anymore. Well, that's, that's the answer to the first question. That is, the whole enterprise of the classroom experience, I think should be an experiential learning experience. The substance, yeah, that's important too but the actual ability to learn how to get along and relate to people who differ with you, that to me is the fundamental humanitarian skill that law school teaches. I've advocated to Sanjay, they should use it in technology too. The idea of the challenge to the technological teaching world is how to stop losing touch with humanity and yet the possibility of introducing a frame within which you learn the substance that requires people to engage with each other in an interactive way, that's a real learning experience. So uh, referring to